Hey guys, I'm Lauren Chatama, my company's Intentional Acting, and I'm hired by working actors who are getting passed over and they don't know why, and what they want is to book more work now and build a reputation of being an in-demand actor. Now, it's hard to do that if you can't relate to the material, and that happens, um, and every actor is different, so that's something about I want to remind you about the method. You know, we, we always think the method means that I get in and I go be the, the police officer and follow him and I have to live exactly like. And Daniel Day-Lewis is a great example of that. But reminder that the method means you find your own method. What is your method? And sometimes it's picking and choosing from different methods. And one of the questions on my nine questions of intentional acting is, how do I relate to the scene? So the first question, what is the scene about, is about all the given circumstances. And so you read the script, you get all the given circumstances of the scene. And then you've got to go, well, now do I, how do I relate to that? But so for example, in class this morning, I had one student, she's like, that question doesn't help her. And so what do you do when you have technique or something that's just not working for you? That's when you've got to lean on the magic what if. The magic what if of Stanislavski. So what, how do I relate to this? Or what if I could relate to it? What would it be like? So we were doing a scene about an FBI and CIA agent and CIA, it was an FBI and CIA agents meeting one another. She was a CIA. And she's like, I, she's like, I can't relate. I'm not a, I, I can't relate to being an FBI agent, but I can see myself cast in it. And I'm, I'm like, great. So that's one step closer, which is you can see yourself cast in it. Why do you see yourself cast in? And she said, well, I just think it's my bone structure, the way my face is. I'm serious. I like drama. And, and I'm like, already you're starting to find little pieces of how you can relate to this thing that you just said. Like, I don't feel connected to that. So just finding the little things like, well, the reason I would be cast in this is maybe it may be something that's a physical feature, but it also could be something, you know, that she loves drama, that she loves intrigue, that she loves finding out, figuring problem solving. Great. That's what CIA agents do. Great. And so then, but then we got to engage her more like, okay, so what if you were a CIA agent? What would you like about that? What would you like about that job? What would you, what would, and, and, and what starts to happen when you ask that what if question in your brain is it opens up your imagination and the entrance to your imagination. Because what if doesn't mean there's a right or wrong. What if doesn't mean you have to do it a perfect way. It just means, well, what if? And it's a great brainstorming tool. And sometimes when we are, particularly when we're in a hurry for a cold reading or a self tape, that we get locked in. I have to make a decision right now. And we hear this thing about, we've got to make choices. And we go, I gotta make a decision right now. Well, I wanna encourage you guys to give yourself a little brainstorm time. Use a little what if, even if you only have three minutes, allow that imagination to come in because that's your imagination is yours and nobody else and it, nobody nobody else has that same imagination and that's what makes you unique and that's what brings you into the room and how you imagine what would it be like to be a CIA agent what would I like about being a CIA agent I've been watching FBI and I'm like oh that looks like fun but I don't have the guts to do it so what if I were an FBI agent, what would I like about it? I love tracking down bad guys. I love being the courageous one who could walk into, you know, and feel so confident with myself that I could hold a gun, that I could, that I could walk into a space that I don't know if there's a bad guy in there. I don't know if there's guns or drugs or anything. Like that scares me to death in real life. But what if I had that courage? What if I could go in there and all of a sudden my brain opens up and the third question of my nine questions is what is the experience of the scene and so sometimes we haven't had that experience so then we get to go well what if I were in that place and I were what if I were in this dark alley and it was dark what would I see what would I hear what would I smell and just as soon as I started asking what if, and I wonder if this is happening for you, but the second 
I started to, and I said, what if I were in this dark alley? I could start to smell urine. Like these, you know, guys peeing on the, on the, on the, peeing on the walls and um, the homeless or the, um, or the, the garbage or, and when it's dark, like that, that it, it just has a different feeling and what I see. And all of a sudden my imagination is going bubble, 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 bubble. And it didn't take that long. Like that took seconds to create that so that when I'm going through that, then I can make a choice. But make sure you engage that what if. It's magical. It connects you to your imagination. If you don't know how to relate to something, think, well, what if I did? What if I had the courage to be that kind of person? Or what if I did like that kind of thing? Or what if I were on another planet, what would that be like? So magic what if. Give yourself the time to ask that before you make a choice so that you have lots of choices to choose from and then it'll get clearer which is the right choice for you. Magic what if. That's your technique for today.